felt indestructible because I thought no one's doing this. Everyone's having a night off, I'm not having a night off. And that just makes you feel more powerful. I remember there was, um, I was still living in Ladywood in the council flat, and it's about two or three miles to the city centre where the gym is, and there was a big snowstorm. Actually, there was no cars on the road, so there's no cars, there's no buses, there's no transport. So probably would have been normal to take a day off that day, but I wouldn't do it. I trudged through that snow up past my knees to the gym. It took me about an hour and a half to get to the gym from like a couple of miles. It usually take 20 minutes to walk or something. It took me an hour and a half. I got to the gym with the key. Nobody was there. I opened the gym. And I thought to myself, you know what? Those fuckers in California right now, they're driving their Porsche, their Ferrari out in the sun, going to the beach. I'm here trudging through the snow and they're going to pay for that. And I'm not taking a day off. But there's something inside me, I've got to do this. It was just a mindset, really, that all these little... If I took a day off there, would it, make, it wouldn't have made no difference, physically. But it made a difference to my mindset. And it was just that I was always painting myself to be the, the underdog, you know? Like, uh, until I was Mr. Olympia, then I couldn't do that anymore. I didn't really change my approach or my attitude, so there would have been a lot of distractions and a lot of pressures on me in the States. And I wanted to keep that, you know, clubber lang I have the tiger, you know, I didn't want to get yeah. too comfortable. I didn't want to go to events with celebrities and all this kind of stuff. So I stayed in Birmingham where I was not accessible to do those kind of things, where I could just be still almost religious about my training and regime and everything that got me to be at the top. Because there's the dilemma, you know, you do all this hard work to get to the top. And then when you get to the top, you get opportunities to make money, but it's going to take away from your time and dedication that you put in to get there. So it's, a lot of people fall down on that, that. You know, amateur bodybuilders turn professional and then all of a sudden they're not so good anymore. Why? Because they've just got so many distractions. And now they're becoming successful. Also get so many people in their ear telling them, oh, you should have done this and you should train like this and you should have done that. And then they forgot just basic hard work that got them there in the first place probably. So. You know, the whole shadow, mystique, unaccessible guy from across the water, the only monster that only comes out. Every show I went to in America, and I could still speak to the promoters now, 20 years later, they say they've never seen anything like it. They would sell out their shows immediately when people knew I was there. There was no internet to see me in the flesh, to see me, or to talk to me, or have access, or anything like that. So when you turned up at a show, those days there was a huge demand Huge demand for everybody, but I was so inaccessible and so different and the physique that had changed the sport and everything like that. So the shadow is like this guy comes out of his gym in Birmingham, goes to a contest, devastates everybody. He's like the opposite, the anti-bodybuilder, because he's, you know, he's not an extrovert. He doesn't tell everybody how great he is all the time, all this stuff that people expect. You just go to the contest, win it, and disappear. And everyone's like, who's that guy? Where's he come from? All this uh, enigma, and then disappears in his gym for another year or two years, and just trains, and doesn't let anyone see him because he's got sweatshirt on all the time, and then pops up again and just blows everyone's mind and, go, and disappears again, like a shadow. So that's where it comes from. Mighty <laughs> pullovers. <laughs>
You know how I did put everything into it, like a tunnel vision that I literally did nothing else. I thought about nothing else. Nobody understood it. What, what the hell are you doing and why are you eating like a robot every two and a half and three hours and doing this and what's this all about, right? I just always had that like tenacity. If I'm doing something, I just do it. And I don't think, wow, that must be hard work. Or I don't really think about it, I just do it. And then I come home, I'll be like, literally like this, because you're on a, you know, it's the only sport where you're eating less. You're eating less calories, you're giving your body less fuel, and you're doing more training and harder training. And you're, you know, you're trying to get contradictory goal of maximum muscle mass and minimum body fat. It's totally contradictory and you're trying to balance that and it's exhausting. I'm choosing to do this, I'm choosing to put my body through this. I had that. And plus people knew that I made huge uh, improvements that year. So I had that and I carried that all the time. You look at these bodybuilders on stage and they're standing there like this or they're doing the poses and that might look pretty easy. But you are tensing every muscle in your body and holding it in this posture and trying to look like, you know, I don't smile much obviously, no, not to smile, but anyway, looking confident and it's fucking hard work. And if you don't prepare for that, man, and people have told me that. And a good friend of mine, Chris Cormier, who's competing in the Mr. Olympia, the later ones, he's like, I couldn't even stand next to you, man. I felt like a, you had a force field coming off here, like, like a power, like confidence. I was always there. I was always there, even if I was at the back of the row, I'd be standing there, I'd be holding that posture. I'd be like, I'm doing this all fucking day if you want. went on stage with absolute feeling of indestructibility because I knew I'd done the work. And people could feel that, you know? 